It's just past 9am on February 22nd, 2024, and 22-year-old Lakin Riley is about to go for her daily morning jog in and around the University of Georgia campus grounds in Athens before starting her day. Her housemates, also students, are occupied with school-related tasks at that moment in time, except for one, Lily Steiner. Lily, unaware that Lakin has already left, wants to invite her for a coffee, but by the time she makes it downstairs, Lakin is already gone. The group share their location on the Find My iPhone app for times just like this. So at around 9.30am, Lily checks the app and sees that Lakin is in a wooded area close by. It's a familiar spot along her usual route, one that many locals frequent. Thinking nothing of it then, and with a busy day ahead, Lily closes the app and heads out to run some errands. When she returns about an hour later, there's still no sign of Lakin. Curious, Lily checks the app once again and notices that she's in the exact same location. A text message then follows asking if she's okay, but there's no response. So Lily reaches out to the group chat to see if anyone else has heard from her, and to no surprise, no one has. Though they're a tad concerned, they assume that there must be some explanation as to why she's in the forest. Thus, they continue with their day, expecting to hear from her soon. Lily heads out once again to run some errands and returns at around 11.30am. When she does, Lakin still isn't at the house, and there's no word from her. So she checks the app once more, and surprise, surprise, she's in the exact same location. When Lily checks on this occasion, she's with Sophia Magana, another housemate, who's just came home from an exam. Sensing something's off, Sophia suggests they should head over to the location to check out what's going on. However, when they arrive, there's no sign of Lakin, just a single AirPod lying on the ground. Assuming it's hers, they pick it up and rush back to the house, where they call the college campus police for assistance. What unfolds over the next few hours is truly disturbing, and it not only sends shockwaves across the United States, but rather, the entire world. Details about Lake and Hope Riley's childhood are limited, but we do have some insight into the few years leading up to that day in February of 2024. At River Ridge High School in Cherokee County, she was described as a beacon of positivity, a standout athlete who inspired her peers, and someone who teachers say was kind and had a passion for learning. Lakin ran on the River Ridge Cross Country team for four years and competed in the GHSA State Cross Country Final various times in Carrollton. She was an unselfish individual who relinquished her opportunity to run finals her senior year because she thought she was not 100% fit. Lakin had two passions in life. One, as you've just learned, was pushing her limits both mentally and physically through running. The other, caring deeply for others. Her desire to make a positive impact on people's lives was a core part of who she was. She genuinely went that extra mile to support those around her. So much in fact that upon graduating in 2020, she pursued a career in nursing and it's for that reason she ended up at the Augusta University's College of Nursing by early 2024. To clear up any confusion, the Augusta University's College of Nursing is located within what's considered the University of Georgia Athens campus grounds. There's someone else living within the same area at around that time as well who's key to this story. 26-year-old Jose Ibarra, a feared member of Venezuela's Trende Aragua gang, had snuck into the United States illegally in the autumn of 2022. Trende Aragua, as many of you will know, have started to make headlines recently due to their growing presence and violent criminal acts within the United States. The Venezuelan gang Trende Aragua now has operations in 16 states. That's according to a Homeland Security memo obtained by the New York Post. Crimes linked to the group include murder, robberies, gun smuggling, as well as famous apartment takeovers in Colorado. Joining us now is Victor Avila. He is a retired special agent with ICE and Homeland Security Investigations. He and his partner were ambushed by a Mexican drug cartel some years ago. His uh, partner, Jaime Zapata, was killed in that uh, incident. Uh, you know, Victor, all too well the dangers of Mexican drug cartels. This is a new danger from Venezuela. What's your assessment of Trende Aragua? 
certainly is a, a danger and actually a national security threat. A lot of people are not talking about the links that the Tren de Aragua has uh, to Venezuela and the regime there with uh, Maduro over there. So Maduro has a lot of connections, obviously. Mm -hmm. We know that Hezbollah, Iran is present there, and the Tren de Aragua coming directly from the Maduro regime into our country. And by the way, mentioning the Mexican cartels, uh, the latest that I've heard is that Tren de Aragua is now kind of feuding with the Mexican mm -hmm. cartels to take over some of those areas uh, and plazas to uh, take over some of these smuggling schemes because they see the the the, the money and potential that they could make uh, with that type of uh, trafficking. The organization is estimated to have a few thousand members, but don't let the numbers fool you because their presence is felt anywhere that they've established a foothold. I mean, just look at what's happened in the United States recently. This relatively small group became one of the main talking points of the 2024 election. When Jose entered the United States illegally, he wasn't fleeing any type of persecution, nor was his life in immediate danger. According to his wife, they wanted to make the trip in search of better opportunities for themselves. The couple, along with his wife's five-year-old son, crossed the border in El Paso, Texas in September of 2022. Upon doing so, they were detained, but were released soon after due to a lack of detention capacity, and then were put on a bus headed for New York. At that time, the city allowed illegal migrants to go there and would assist by providing food, shelter, and even financial support. When the family arrived in New York, they were placed in the Roosevelt Hotel in Manhattan, the city's migrant arrival center. It's unclear if any Trende Aragua-related criminal activity occurred during his stay. However, within a year, Jose would see himself in handcuffs for non-gang-related charges. He had found some employment as a food delivery driver, and on the day of his arrest, he was seen riding a moped with his stepson, who wasn't wearing a helmet. So concerned locals reported the situation to the police, which led to child endangerment charges. At that point, the NYPD should have lodged a detainer, which, for those of you who don't know, allows ICE to take a person, in this case Jose, into their custody to ultimately be deported. However, they didn't, and he was released. Around a month later, Jose approached officials within the Roosevelt Hotel to request a flight to Georgia to join his brothers, Diego and Arginas, who also entered the country illegally. According to sources, the reason for the move was for work. Apparently, Diego would call Jose on a near enough daily basis, telling him to get over there because the opportunities were endless. This request would end up being approved with the city covering the cost of his flight. But his wife and stepson didn't make the trip because the couple had split shortly after his arrest for reasons that have never publicly been stated. Instead, a woman, Rosbelli Flores Bello, also an illegal migrant who had met Jose while staying in New York, took the trip with him. When the pair touched down in Georgia, they lived at a property in the Argo apartment complex. This is where Jose's brothers had been placed by authorities. Although Georgia was described as the land of opportunity, that wasn't really the case. You see, although Diego bragged about numerous job listings, there wasn't any work for them. Diego did have a job for a brief period at the University of Georgia, but he was fired once staff figured out he was in the country illegally. With plenty time on their hands then, some of them turned to crime. Diego and Jose were caught by police stealing clothes and food from a Walmart. The pair were given a citation for misdemeanor shoplifting and were let go. Again, just like in New York, the police should have lodged a detainer with ICE, but according to a spokesperson, because they weren't arrested, no checks about their immigration status were done. Our officers do not have immediate access to immigration status. According to ICE's 287G program, the general process of identifying and removing non-citizens with criminal or pending charges arrested by state and local law enforcement agencies is handled during the booking process by the law enforcement agency responsible for the jail. If these checks were done, then maybe what happened just a few short months later would have never occurred because Jose would have either been in the custody of ICE or wouldn't have been in the country at all.
In the early hours of February 22nd, 2024, surveillance camera footage captures Jose Ibarra lingering around an apartment block on the university campus grounds. His own apartment complex is less than a minute's walk away. He appears to be focused on one apartment. As you'll see, he repeatedly attempts to open the door. When he goes out of shot around the back, he peeps through the apartment window. Inside, the occupant, a young lady, who's been getting ready for the day ahead, is oblivious as to what's going on outside. That would change at this moment right here though. You see Jose ducking, well, that's because on his final attempt to open the door, the occupant heard the handle rattle, so she looks through the peephole and asks who's there, prompting that response from him. The occupant then calls 911. Following this, Jose slowly walks away from the scene into the Oconee Forest Park and doesn't return. So why was Jose lingering around in the early hours then? Well, according to detectives, they believe he was trying to hunt someone down to... This was the leading theory because of what happened less than two hours after he entered the forest. At around 9.05am, Lake and Riley is captured on CCTV going for her morning jog. That's roughly two minutes after she was captured on the ring doorbell camera. She's going on her usual route and cuts into the forest as you already know.
As discussed earlier on in the video, Laken doesn't re-emerge from the forest, and her friends, concerned, begin a small search party for her. But after searching for about 20 minutes, they re-emerge and contact police to ask for assistance. It would take first responders 21 minutes to locate Laken. When Laken was found, first responders made every effort to save her life, but sadly, she was pronounced dead at the scene. Her cause of death was later determined to be blunt force trauma and asphyxia. Surprisingly, the murder weapons, two rocks, were discovered at the scene. An investigation into the incident was opened and evidence collection began right away. A stack of evidence was recovered from the scene, but the breakthrough came when investigators reviewed surveillance camera footage. The CCTV revealed the man in black who had been lingering around the apartment block shortly before the murder, and because he was spotted heading into the forest, in the direction where Lakin was later found, it made him their number one suspect. Lakin's heart, according to her smartwatch, stopped at around 9.28am, meaning then, if there was anyone who was behaving suspiciously on CCTV in the surrounding area after that time, they'd become the primary focus for the investigation. And what a surprise, there it was, a man acting extremely suspiciously at a nearby apartment complex roughly an hour after Lakin's heart had stopped beating. The man was captured placing some items in two separate dumpsters on two different occasions. Each time, he wore different clothes. Detectives felt this lead was worth investigating, so they travelled to the apartment complex. When they arrived, however, they encountered a setback. One of the dumpsters had already been emptied, which meant a potential loss of evidence. Just as they thought this lead was going nowhere, they searched the other one, and it was there they found bloodstained clothes. Lab tests later confirmed that the blood belonged to Lake and Riley. It's not. 
not it's not the same as parts motor trash. Still usually done at 11. Yes, yes, 11. Then after work, where did he go? He was in the house in the house. He was 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 in the house. We don't know anyone around here. We, you know, we're just united together, and we don't know many people around here. Okay, what time did you get home? I told you you got to my casa, miércoles. Para dónde se puede ser el rayo de salud? No se salió a las once, pero a qué hora llegó a la casa? A la que me echó que me iba ahora caminando sin me ir a casa a las dos. So you know he walked so. And he said he got home at 11 30, almost 12 o'clock. Okay, when you got home, what did you do? When you go to the house, what did you do? Yo era reposo un ratito y espero que el cuerpo se me enfriara para meterme a bañar. So he got in and I just rested for a little bit. 
and then uh, took a shower. Okay, who was home when you got home? ¿Quién estaba en la casa cuando usted llegó? Estaban ellos, como ellos saben más temprano, los hermanos míos. Ellos saben más temprano, ¿entiendes? Yo soy el último que salgo ahorita en el horario. So they okay with them uh, at the house, uh, my brothers were there, because I'm the one who gets home the latest. They get, they get home early than I do. So they, were, they were all there? Todos sus hermanos estaban acá. Sí, sí, todos estaban allá en la casa allá. And then what time did you go to sleep? Yeah, ¿Qué hora en que usted uh, fue a dormir? No, yo me pongo a volver el teléfono y no te puedo decir que ahora porque me pongo a volver el teléfono, el teléfono, hay que ir a mi familia, a mi sí, niña, sí, pero más o menos. No, ni idea, porque para uno para tú sabes cuando uno se ha quedado el mío, no se ha quedado el mío, uno no ve la hora, ¿entiendes? Ok, so he said I want to be able to tell you the time because when I get home, after I, I do what I do, I get on the phone, mm -hmm. I'm playing on the phone, talking to my daughter, and, you know, just fall asleep. I can't tell you the time that I fall asleep, but... Okay, would it have been, he can't give you a range, was it a couple of hours after he got home or was, had the sun come up? Entonces, cuando usted fue a dormir, dame más o menos, se fue algunos minutos, algunas horas, o ya salió el sol. No, tampoco así. Este, como más o menos me duré como, ¿qué? Más o menos me fue contando como la una, un y pico, algo así, porque... So, if I had to guess, I would say probably one o'clock, one or some change. Okay, then what time did you wake up? Yesterday. ¿A qué hora es que usted despertó ayer? Ayer, ahora, ayer que es miércoles. Ah, no, ayer fue jueves. Sí, yo bueno, ya desperté que como a, casi a la me paré tarde porque me pararon pero los hermanos míos me pararon que como a las dos y pico. A las dos de la tarde, sí. a las dos, su, tu hermano, ¿cuál hermano? El, el men y la gorda. Te dispersaron. Sí, porque ya ellos se estaban alistando para irse a trabajar y yo me paré, ellos me pararon, no, bueno, voy a ir a trabajar. Okay, okay. Era tarde. So yesterday, the sibling woke him up, uh, Manny and, and the gorda woke him up. He said it was around 2 o'clock. They came to woke him up. So you were asleep from about 1 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Entonces usted estaba dur dormido mm -hmm. más o menos de la 1 de la mañana hasta casi las 2 de la tarde el, el, el mismo. Enseñarle un video y queremos saber si usted conoce quién está en este video. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Do you know where this is? Yeah. Yes. Who is this? 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 Okay, there's only one person in the video, so who is that? In, in the video, solamente tiene una, una persona. ¿Quién es? Is that you or your brother? Sí. ¿Es usted o es su hermano? No, es de él. Es him. Him? No, es his brother. Sorry, I'm about him. His okay, I'm going to rewind it and let him watch it again. Usted va a ver otra vez. And where is this? ¿Dónde es eso? Es en el basura, donde nosotros vivimos. Es en el trash can, o en el back over there, by where we live. No, ese está pegado, no está. Sí, 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 sí. Yes, I did. Just give it a second. Dame, dame un segundo. You'll still see him walk. Is that his hat? Esta gorra es su gorra. Sí, es su gorra. Yes, it's my hat. Okay, does he know what his brother is doing? Sabe qué está haciendo su hermano. Yo no estaba botando la basura. Creo que yo sé, ahí yo estaba botando la basura. Entonces, ahí está botando la basura. Ok. ¿Y cómo sabe que es Víctor? ¿Y cómo que es el hermano de Víctor? Porque ahí esa ropa ya se la ha visto bien. Porque ahí se la ha visto bien. Porque ahí se la ha visto bien. Claro. Ok. ¿Es el hermano de Víctor que solo usa Víctor? ¿Es la ropa que usa Víctor? Nada más. Esa ropa que en vez de todo para su trabajo y todo. And that's the, the, the clothes that he wears to work mm -hmm. and everything. Okay. And I'm going to show him one more picture. Oh, yeah. He's going to show him one more video to see. One more video for you to look at. Otro video para ustedes, mira. 
Usted va a ver el video, después va a hacer algunas preguntas. Esos videos de atrás de la Roma o el autobús? Los videos en el back where we take the bus. ¿Eso es la parada del autobús? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Can you tell who, is, who that person is? ¿Quién es esa persona? Ese video es hermano mío. Es mi hermano. Claro. Es el primer. Sí, ya lo van a reconocer yo, hermano. Y dice, of course, es mi hermano Victor. I know I have recognized my brother Victor. ¿Cómo lo has ¿Cómo que sale? Porque esa ropa la misma, esa chaqueta es la que tiene en la calle. Sí, sí, yo como mi hermano. Él es más bro. 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 Él es cuando está allá trabajando en el restaurante, él, él viene para casa con guantes. Mm -hmm. ¿Sí o no? Sí. Yes. Describe the ones that he used uh, Describe las guantes que trae para casa. Son los mismos que yo tengo metido en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo que yo tengo en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo que yo tengo en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo que yo tengo en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo que yo tengo en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo que yo tengo en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo que yo tengo en mi mochila, son esos. Es el mismo Uh, con Víctor ahí, ahí es la mochila de Víctor o es suya? No, esa es la de él, esa no es la mochila mía, la mochila mía es la de atrás. ¿Es esta esta mochila gris es tuya o es de, 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 de él? Esa es su mochila. Yo la mía es así, pero yo la mía es de mi espalda. Dice, ok, mine es a backpack. I don't know what he's looking at there. He said, I want that. But his is gray as well. That's a bag that kind of goes across your body. Sí, no de lado. Yeah, la mochila que usted trae va a la espalda. De espalda y de 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 Victor es que de lado. De lado. Victor wears the backpack that goes across the body. Has he seen Victor with that bag before? Usted ha visto Victor con esta mochila antes. Sí, claro, él la tiene en la casa. Yes, of course, he has it at home. How often does he carry it? Tiene su cosa ahí metida. ¿Qué tan, uh, ¿Qué tan pronto uh, él, él trae esta mochila con él? No, él tiene tiempísimo con su mochila. Y él, él, él lleva la mochila cuántas veces por el día, por, por semana. Ahí tiene todo su cosa, su cédula, su, su, todo su vaina, ¿entiendes? Sí. Su colonia, tiene todo ahí metido. Entonces él trae la mochila todos los días. Claro. Ok, so he put the bag every day. He carries all his personal items in that bag. Is that bag in the apartment right now? And the mochila está en el los apartamentos que están en casa. Yes, it's at home. Where? Donde? En el apartamento donde vivimos nosotros. In the apartment where we live. Where is that? Does Does Victor have a bedroom where he keeps that bag in? Ah, él tiene un cuarto donde él deja la mochila. Un solo cuarto nada más de vivimos todos. We all stay in one room. We all stay in one room, claro, one room that we stay together. Dos camas, un nan de dormir la gorda y el otro hermano mío, este, Giancarlo en un mueble y yo vi todo junto. ¿Cuántas camas entonces? Dos camas y un mueble, un mueble. Ok, so he's saying a two beds and I think he's, he's saying a, what's it called? Two time, uh, el mueble. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Sí, con un sofá que se abre, sí. con un cama. Yeah. Ok, so he's saying, uh, like a full time, and two beds. Okay. So if we walk in the front door, like guide us to where Victor's belongings would be. Entonces, entrando por la, la, puer, la, la puerta de la frente, guíanos para donde, si, vámonos para la izquierda o la derecha, para, ¿Cómo entramos? Guíanos para llegar a esta mochila. 
Y como decía, hermano, ahí pueden entrar en la puerta y la, todas las cosas, todos no tenemos nada escondido porque no somos delincuentes, como le digo, ¿entiendes? Sí. Todo está en su sitio, no somos delincuentes para estar escondiendo nada, ¿me entiendes? No, pero la mochila va a estar donde, ahí se ahí está, la puerta. Sí, ahí tiene que estar montada arriba, donde, donde, donde duerme, donde dormir. Si no está en la cama, tiene que estar ahí donde está toda mi ropa, donde está toda mi pertenencia. Ahí tiene que Entonces, estar. explícame, entrando por la fuerza, ¿dónde va a estar esta mochila? Si no está en la cama, tiene que estar en la pertenencia donde yo tengo mi, mi ropa doblada. No suya, de Víctor. Que todos los, somos hermanos, hermanos, todos estamos juntos. Ok, ok. So he said, come in, if it's not right there on top of the bed, it's going to be by their stuff where they keep their clothes next to the bed somewhere. Is that on the left? Is it on the lado izquierdo o derecho? De izquierdo. Left side. Much of the evidence that we collected during our investigation points to Victor as the person that hurt the student. Va a quedar usted sorprendido si la evidencia que nosotros agarramos está indicando que Victor lastimó a esta persona. Tienen que tener evidencia como que digo. Eso no es que le pregunté. Va a estar sorprendido, sí o no. Si usted dice que no estoy acá. Sí, va a estar sorprendido, sí o no. Yo no puedo decir que sí porque no sé. Yo no puedo decir que sí. Yo voy a decir ahorita que su hermano Víctor le lastimó la persona que estamos investigando. Cada vez sorprendido, cada vez sorprendido, cada vez sorprendido. Of course, I'm going to be surprised. Of course, I'm going to be surprised. Claro, porque tiene que tener evidencia, me imagino. We're going to have to have evidence. Yes, we understand. Ya, entendemos eso. But again, he doesn't know, you don't know anything about that, correct? Pero otra vez, usted no sabe nada de eso. No sé nada, no sé nada de lo que está pasando ni nada. Me quedo sorprendido porque me están investigando a mí también. Me quedo sorprendido. Hey, he's, he's, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you're investigating me as well. I'm no. surprised. So, at, at no time in the past 12 to 24 hours did Victor tell you any information about hurting somebody. Entonces, en ninguna vez... Ahorita de las 12 a 24 horas, has te dicho, Víctor, que algo ocurrió, que pasó algo. ¿Qué pasó algo? Sí. No. No. At no. any point in time, did you participate in trying to cover up somebody being hurt? En cualquier tiempo, participó usted en alguien estando lastimado no participó en nada malo que no me involucre en nada entiendo dígame otra vez que no participó en nada 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 I participate in anything when police arrested Jose Ibarra, they immediately noticed multiple scratch marks covering his body, consistent with some evidence found at the scene. Lakin had DNA under her fingernails, indicating she fought back and scratched her killer in a desperate struggle for her life. To no surprise, the DNA found on Lakin's nails belonged to Jose. Given the circumstances and similar cases, detectives concluded that he initially attempted to Lakin. However, when she resisted, he became enraged and murdered her. This isn't where the evidence stopped, because upon searching Jose's Snapchat account, detectives found photos taken on the day of the murder. In them, Jose was wearing the same clothes as the man in black, and they also found his fingerprint on Lakin's phone. Although the fingerprint was a match, it wasn't identified through the police database, rather a forensic specialist. A detail that would become significant for the defense during the trial because yes, he took it to one after being charged with not only her murder, but also the attempted rape and a peeping Tom charge due to the incident at the apartment block before the murder. Initially, the case was set to be decided by a jury trial, but the defense chose to switch it to a bench one instead, leaving Jose's fate in the hands of the judge. They argued that the intense media coverage had made it nearly impossible to find impartial jurors. In November of 2024, in fact only a couple of days ago from when I'm recording this video, the trial began. The prosecution's case was simple. All the evidence gathered, which we've already been over, pointed to Jose being the perpetrator. The defense, however, argued there wasn't enough proof beyond reasonable doubt, with the fingerprint evidence playing a key role in the defense. 
They even introduced an alternative theory that Jose's brother Diego may have been the man responsible. In the end though, ladies and gentlemen, the judge sided with the prosecution and found him guilty on all charges. Jose was sentenced to life in prison soon after. During the trial, I probably filled up two legal pads full of notes during the trial, but the closings, I want to just listen. And that's what I did. But I wrote down two things in the closing. Um, one was a statement by Ms. Ross that um, the evidence was overwhelming and powerful. And then I also wrote down what Ms. Beck said that uh, I'm required to set aside my emotions. That's the same thing that we tell jurors in what uh, and would give them their their job. I would. Uh, that's the way I have to approach this, and I did. Uh, both of those statements are correct. Um, I will now announce the verdict. In the state of Georgia versus Jose Antonio Abara. Case SU 24 CR 0323, count one, malice murder. I find the defendant guilty. Count two, felony murder. I find the defendant guilty. Count three, felony murder. I find the defendant guilty. Count four, felony murder. I find the defendant guilty. Count five, kidnapping with bodily injury. I find the defendant guilty. Count six, aggravated assault with intent to rape. I find the defendant guilty. Count seven, aggravated battery. I find the defendant guilty. Count eight, obstructing or hindering a 911 call. I find the defendant guilty. Count nine, tampering with evidence. I find the defendant guilty. Count 10, peeping Tom, I find the defendant guilty. I uh, certainly will allow both sides to look at this if you want to do it. Um, the next step is sentencing. Oftentimes, people use the term closure at an event like this, and I, 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 I acknowledge that there's no such thing as closure. It'll, it, there's, there, there can't, there will not be closure. Uh, this is just another stage or event in this, uh, in this tragedy, and uh, that's, that's the way I view that. People, people mean well by making that, saying that, but it's. Uh, uh, I've heard it explained that when you have something like this um, that impacts one or many, um, you even have to make a conscious effort to breathe at some times. And that just comes on you at any particular, you know, if you just don't know what's going to bring it on you. Um, and you, you realize that you do make it through the day, but you don't know how you did it. Um, but I also, and this goes back to what Kerry Howell was saying, that um, you know, as, as many times as you reflect on the loss, um, at some point, you start smiling about the memories. And um, I'm hopeful that at some point that takes over to a certain extent. But um, there's very little, including the sentence of Mr. Abara, that's going to uh, help much. And I acknowledge that. Um, With that, Mr. Barr, if you'll please stand. Count one, malice murder. I sentence you to life without the possibility of parole. 
Count two will be vacated as a matter of uh, operation of law. Count three vacated by operation of law. Count four vacated by operation of law. Count five life in prison consecutive to count one. Count six, 20 years to serve consecutive to count five. Count seven will merge with count one. Count eight, 12 months consecutive to count six. Strike that. Uh, 12 months, but I don't want it to six. This is just going to be consecutive. Um, count nine, 12 months consecutive. Count 10, five years consecutive to count six. So that would mean the misdemeanors would come after the felonies. That would be the sentence. Mr. Barr, I will advise you that you have 30 days from today to seek uh, any post-judgment relief in the form of a motion for a new trial or um, appealing this case directly. Um, if you make a motion for a new trial and that is denied, you have 30 days from that date to file your first appeal, first level of appeal. Court will appoint a lawyer to represent you if you cannot afford one. I will also advise you that you have to pay the So, Jose Ibarra was handed a life sentence, and for those of you who don't know, the death penalty was an option. However, the district attorney decided all the way back in May of this year, 2024, for those of you watching in the future, that it wouldn't be handed down if he was to either plead guilty or was to be found guilty at trial. The decision was reached after careful deliberation with the senior prosecutor and the support of the victim's family. Our utmost duty is to ensure that justice is served and that the victim's family is an integral part of the deliberation process. Despite this, there's been a huge backlash, many including some government officials aren't happy with the outcome given the circumstances of the case and are now discussing whether the sentence can be overturned and the death penalty reconsidered. Both the family have spoken with the district attorney and have given guidance on what kind of sentence to hand down, then I think life in prison is probably what they wanted. They want him to rot in prison for the rest of his life, probably with the mindset of why allow him the freedom of death. Before we wrap this case up, there's one piece of information that I haven't mentioned. And to be honest with you, it's probably the most disturbing part of the story. The reason I'm leaving it until last is because I want you to ask yourself why the police didn't respond to this. This is the 911 call made to police as Lakin was being murdered. Bearing in mind, it's believed that she fought Jose for 18 minutes before ultimately being killed. She pressed the SOS button on her smartwatch that alerted the police, but... They never responded to the call. Clark County, no one. Hello, this is Clark County, no one. 